Hi, I'm Andrew Engel, Assistant Professor of Psychology at Kenyon College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to perform a one-sample t-test. The t-test is used to evaluate whether a sample comes from a particular population. In other words, is our sample mean significantly different from the population mean? And in this case, the population mean can be any hypothesized value against which we want to compare our sample. While we can just compare these two numbers to see if one is larger, the t-test estimates the likelihood that any such observed difference is due to chance. By convention, psychologists deem a difference to be statistically significant if this probability is less than or equal to 5%. So let's look at an example. Say we wanted to know whether students who take an SAT prep class earn better than average test scores. In this case, our sample mean would be the mean of all the students' scores in our prep class, and this is symbolized by the letter X with a bar over it. Our population mean would be the national average SAT score, and this is symbolized by the Greek letter mu. We would then calculate our t-statistic by looking at the difference between our sample mean and our population mean and dividing by the standard error, which is the standard deviation of our sampling distribution. But how would we actually calculate this using Microsoft Excel? In our study, we have 20 students who took our SAT prep class. Uh, we didn't actually run this experiment, but rather just created these values for the purpose of our demonstration. Now, we know that the national average SAT test score is 1,500, so we're going to put that here next to the letter mu. Next, we want to establish our sample size. While we could just type in 20, we'll use the Excel function count and select the sample. Next, we need to define our degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, our sample size minus 1. Again, we could type in 19, but instead, let's select the cell that contains our sample size and subtract 1. Our next step is to calculate the descriptive statistics for our sample. We'll start by calculating our sample mean. To do so, we'll use the built-in Excel function average, select our sample of scores, and it returns a sample mean of 1,614. Then we can simply take the difference of this score and our population mean to get the difference between the two. We next need to calculate the standard deviation. The formula for the standard deviation is shown here. It's the square root of the sum of the squared differences over the degrees of freedom. Thankfully, Excel has a built-in function to calculate this, and we don't have to do it by hand. So the original uh, built-in function in Excel was simply STDEV, but you can see when I type that in, a pop-up window appears showing other options. Now these are more modern options, so depending on the version of Excel you're using, you might not see them. We can use one of two. We can either use the original STDEV or STDEV.S, which means the sample standard deviation, but each of these uses the same formula. And that returns a sample DVD, uh, a standard deviation of around 222. Finally, we need to calculate our standard error. Now, the standard error is not something for which Excel has a built-in function, so we need to calculate that by hand. But it's simply the standard deviation over the square root of our sample size. We've already calculated the standard deviation, so we merely need to refer to that cell and then say divide that by the square root of our sample size. And we have a standard error of 49.83. And now we have everything that we need to calculate our t-statistic. So remember, t is simply the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. And we've already calculated these terms. So now we simply need to take our difference in means, divide by the standard error, and we have a t-score of 2.29. So our last step is to ask Excel what probability is this t-score associated with. To do that, we use the Excel function tdist for t-distribution. We give Excel our t-score, the degrees of freedom, and whether this is a one-tailed or two-tailed test. If you don't know the difference between one-tailed and two-tailed tests, or if you're confused as to which you should use, go ahead and use two-tailed, as that's the more conservative of the two. 
And Excel tells us that with a t-score of 2.29 and degrees of freedom of 19, there's only a 3% chance that the difference between our sample mean and our population mean is due to random variability. So we can conclude that students who take our SAT prep class score significantly higher than the national average.